Can I just say, I served the, um, as a minister for two years in Northern Ireland, and I've been called far worse <laughs> than you just called me. Um, I, I just want to do two things um, in the time available. Uh, the first is to say why I think people voted as they did in the referendum. And then secondly, what I think the position we've now, now reached is so first of all, Pam sat over there, she's one of our councillors in Mosley, she'll affirm that when we were knocking on doors during the referendum and standing outside railway stations and shops, there were three issues that were raised with us repeatedly. The first one, and it's no good ducking it, it did happen, was immigration. In fact, that was the most often repeated um, thing that was raised with us by people in Mosley. Second, the second issue was we want our sovereignty back. And when I would question people about what they meant with that, um, we got a different answer from almost every different person we spoke to. Um, but I got the, the, the basic idea that they thought Parliament should be making our laws and we shouldn't be importing any regulations <coughs> from Europe. The third issue was that they said they wanted greater economic independence. Now, I don't agree with any of those three positions, but that's what people said to us. So, let's just scroll forward to where we are today. If, and, and I agree, I mean, you know, the, the spectrum of possibilities is almost limitless. Um, but let's just, for the sake of argument, say... Theresa May gets a good deal, we stay in the customs union or the European economic area um, and you know, we, sh we won't be absolutely decimated by a loss of trade with Europe. Seems unlikely, but let's just say that happened. What's the price we're going to have to pay for it? Some element of free movement of labour. So the first thing people voted for <coughs> to curtail immigration, and they weren't mostly particularly concerned whether people were from Europe or Africa or the Indian subcontinent or anywhere else. It was just immigration in general. So if we do sign up um, for some form of um, remaining in the customs union or the economic area, there's not a cat in house chance that the other European countries will agree to that without there being some elements of free movement to labour. So the first thing people voted for, not going to happen. The second thing, let's say it was Parliament to make our own laws, um, we're now told um, unofficially that there's going to be some sort of vote on the 27th um, about the deal. But what we already know is that the government are committed to introducing hundreds and hundreds and I think it's actually thousands of pieces of secondary yeah, legislation. Yeah. And that's what the so-called Henry VIII procedures to introduce all of the regulation that we are involved in in Europe into our own domestic legislation. So far from uh, repatriating the legislative process, um, we're going to have uh, all of that law repatriated into our domestic legislation by small committees, not by the whole of Parliament. It'll be um, a delegated legislation committee which will decide in each case what to do about it. Now, I was at an event last night um, which was chaired by the Deputy Speaker, <laughs> Lindsay Hoyle, and he went through a list of delegated legislation committees of which was the fastest. What do you think the fastest delegated legislation committee in this parliament is? How long did it take? Six months, three months. Six months, three months? Something like that. Three minutes. Three minutes. I thought you meant All of this repatriating our parliamentary democracy processes is going to be uh, through a series of processes that will last, in some cases, two or three minutes. 
That's the reality. Where's the scrutiny in that? So that's not the, that's not going to happen. Um, just the final thing, um, economic independence. And I, I'm told I've got to shut up now, so I'll just say one word on that. Um, does, is there, are there any psychologists here tonight? No? Oh, good, because no one can tell me. Like so. Psychologists have a concept which they call cognitive dissonance. That means that when all the facts are presented to you, you dismiss them and go with whatever your prejudice is. I might have got it slightly scientifically wrong, but that's the effect of it. And when, and Michael was right, we were warned what was going to happen. Economists, businesses, um, everyone said these things will happen. And of course, because they didn't happen the next day, people thought, oh, we were wrong. But they are going to happen. And I had a round table meeting with businesses in my constituency over the summer. And every one of them, from as big as um, in, in Maria's constituency, Jaguar Land Rover, to um, a small company that is a gold and silver trading company, all of them, without exception, are already looking for alternative venues within Europe to move their operations to. So it is going to happen. And my estimate, just to, from that meeting, is that in Nosley alone, we could lose up to 10,000 jobs. And across the city region, we're probably talking about closer to 100,000. Now, nobody's done a respectable piece of academic work on that. I'm just going by what announcements have been made uh, and what conversations I've had. So the idea that we're going to be, well, we will be more economically independent. Stop. It'll just that we'll have no economy left to be independent <laughs> with. So that is, in my view, where we're at at the moment. And frankly, it's a mess.